having a sermon by our sister Amaris Pope. Let's hear what I'm I say put your armor to the test because it tells us uh, to put on the whole armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the blessed prayer of righteousness, the shield of faith that we may be able to withstand the uh, fiery arrows of the enemy. Now, say that you go to war. You got the same armor on that you had when you were 13. You're now 25. You can't use that armor. You have to change armor for the fight. You can't fight in a fight where they have big artillery. With little weapons. You come to the back ready and you got a shaky sword and, and a and a dish it up breastplate, you're gonna get hammered. I'm gonna just tell you that. You are not gonna win. Go so what he does is before we get there, or sometimes during, so he he puts us through a fiery test, right? While he while he's doing that, he's refining the arm that you're wearing. Uh-huh. Refining the arm. So if your face has a cheek in it, that, that shield got a little cheek in it, I see it. He sees it from a mile away. Yeah. Before or while you're going through it, he fixes it. He fixes it. Yeah. So depression sometimes takes away your faith. Or it, it, it dwindles it. You feel like it's getting low. But then you remember that God said that he will sustain you. Yeah. That he will strengthen you in this situation. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And how does he strengthen you? He refines the armor that you're yeah. in. He refines it. That sword was too small for this fight, so I'm going to give you a bigger one. Go but you got to let this one go first. Yeah. How does he make you let it go? Through the fiery trials of this world. Yeah. That's how I looked at it. Come on, <laughs> because now I'm standing here and I'm realizing my faith not the same. I'm like, when I was going through, uh, in the beginning of it, I was doubting God on every turn. And then I feel like now you can tell me, well, Josh, you know, we're about to foreclose on this and take that. And I'm like, oh, you know what? God's got it. <laughs> Let me go pray for a little bit, strengthen myself a little bit, but I already know, prepared in my mind, with my shield of faith. My faith is a little bit bigger. That shield is a little bit bigger now. And 5, it says that he never leaves us or abandons us. Deuteronomy 31 and 8. And the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. I know we feel alone, depressed. The present state that takes you away from life is like a cancer. That's why I called it that. And if you don't catch it right when it's right there at the door, when he's just asking you too many questions or asking you questions that because you didn't read the word, you don't know. Uh, you're not, you don't have an answer, so it starts to spread. Now, he's, he's holding up too much space in your mind. That's what depression does. It takes your mind. It offsets everything. And then, you know, once the mind, once you get the, the, the head, you got the body. So he comes for your mind because if he can take your mind, he holds your whole body captive. He don't need to work too hard for anything else. He don't need the hard stuff that's all going to follow because of what your mind is and where the state of your mind is. Amen? Amen. 
So I just want to encourage everybody today. Uh, you got to fight. Don't let them come in and, and tell you this and tell you that without you at least putting up a fight. At least do your best to fight it. And then God is going to come and do the rest. But you got to you gotta put that armor on and you got to act like this is your life depending on it because it does. Once he takes your mind, like I said, you have nothing else to go off of. That's why you can't get out of bed. That's why you're staying in the bed all day and you, you, can't, you can't move. You can't do this. I was, some days I just, wanted to, I just wanted to die. I, just, I felt like it was not worth me living. And then I remembered that the Lord says that he, he, he fearfully and wonderfully made me and that he has a plan for my life and a purpose. And a, and a plan and a purpose means that I, I have to live until he calls me home because if I don't, then I won't succeed in what he said in giving my gifts and, and elevating or edifying the church. If I wasn't here today, how would you know how to fight the depression today? And that's how I look at it. There are people who need us. We need each other, but there are people who need us. Because if we are able to come through, and I'm coming through victorious, because I'm not, I'm not a quitter at, at one point. I'm coming through victorious because I know who my God is. If you see my victory, then how do you know you can't get the same victory? He's not a favor of person. He's not, he's not going to favor me and give me a victory that he won't give you. He loves us all the same. And I hope that you understand that and that you keep that with you everywhere you go. He loves you, and he will never leave you or forsake you, even though you're feeling alone and things like that. You have to look to the hill from which comes your help, because all of your help comes from the Lord. He will never leave you or forsake you. Pray my to the Lord.
The time is now, and the time is yours. As we sing. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, uh, you know, it has not been 
you know, an easy walk for me. It hasn't been. But you know something? I'm sure about who I serve. And I'm sure that it's real. I'm sure that he loves me. And I'm sure he called me to be who I am. I'm sure about it. And that's what hope is. It keeps me holding up. Where else can I go? Can't flee his presence no matter where I go. So I keep going anyway. In the storms, in the heartaches, in the times of depression, the times of pain. I still keep going. Are you with me? This is what this is what I do. This is this is who I am. But you have to be sure. That's the key. Once God makes Himself certain and sure to you, no matter what you go through, you might bow your head for a minute or two, but after a while, you're gonna lift it up and say, Lord, okay, I trust you. I don't understand it, but I trust you. But you gotta really know Him for yourself, for real. There's a lot of freaking and phonies that. You know, think you know, but when you really know. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. You don't worry about stuff. You, 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 and if you do, it ain't going to be long. You get right through it. What was I thinking? What did I forget who's in control? Yeah. And you snap out of it. Yeah. So be encouraged. Thank you for the word. Amen. Appreciate it. Amen. Amen. All right, God bless you. Now we're going to go downstairs. We're going to break some bread. And then we're going to come back and we're going to begin our spiritual gifts class. Uh, we certainly pray that everyone can stay. It's an important part of uh, your growth as a, a child of God. And uh, we certainly want you to do that. I'm tired of the saints of God just, you know, being comfortable with coming to a church and warming the pews. That God never caused nobody to warm up. you got work to do. Are you with me? All right, one other thing I just wanted to say. The nursing home ministry and the Christmas program, I would like to see as many people as possible go and to show these people some love that they otherwise may not get. Are you with me? And um, you, if you've never gone to the nursing home ministry, um, you don't know what it's like to, to see the, the seniors and uh, those who have been some abandoned by their families. Some who just don't have any family. That's right, that's right. To see the smile and the appreciation on their face that somebody took enough time out to come and see about them. Amen. So I would love to see as many of you as possible. So, you know, be in touch with our uh, nursing home ministry leaders uh, so that you can go. God bless you, uh, Minister Lewis. And come on, church, give a hand clap of praise again for the youth ministry department. The three speakers that we had on today, Sister Tania, Sister Mary, and my Josh, we want to thank our sister Erica.